We are ready, guys. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Good, Good morning. morning. <laughs> How you guys doing today? Yeah, it's a great day. It's a beautiful day out there. It is definitely a great day. So we got Richard Campos today in here with our podcast, and uh, we know that you're a veteran. You're a Marine veteran. You served. How many years did you serve? I started in 1969. Wow. wow. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Really? Uh, yeah, 1969, uh, Marine Corps. And uh, 271, and got out, honorable discharge. Yeah. And then joined the Army National Guard in 1981, and I finished with them in 2004. Wow. Yeah. So, so 2003, I was reading here that you went to Iraq in 2003. Yeah, my unit got called up, and we were for the invasion in 2003 yeah yeah, yeah. and did so you were in the, in the 60s did you go to vietnam at all or you know what no it's it's kind of a, even to this day i think about that why because yeah. i i joined like a you know and i shouldn't have, <laughs> but i did join yeah and uh no they never did send me but they sent me to school yeah and um so i was appreciative of that and um looking back and knowing the history of the war now i'm glad they didn't send me Right, yeah, that was a pretty violent one. My father was in yeah. Vietnam. He was a gunner on the helicopter. He was in the Tet Offensive. Oh, uh, 68 then, right? Yeah. That's Tet Offensive. Yeah, we all seen that movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, well, let's get into it. I mean, we're, we're here to share your story right now. You are you are going back and forth. You've done over 35 trips to uh, to Iraq. That's um, right, that's and, right. And then, and then something touched you, uh, mm-hmm. and you can share that story. Something touched you to go to Ukraine, and, and uh, how did that happen? Well, you know, it's all connected because of the uh, my travels to Iraq of helping the refugees there. I started that. My first mission was in 2009 yeah. uh, when I went my first mission back to Iraq as a humanitarian. So when I say mission, I don't mean military mission. Right. Humanitarian mission. Okay. So uh, from that point on, it just continued. Uh, I've just felt that I need to continue doing more and more and more and more and more. And right. I'm just blessed to have that ability to do that. Oh, wow. That's insane. Yeah. What do you think, Megan? Thank you both for your service. Uh, James here is also a veteran. I know. I heard. Thank you for your service, oh, James. Thank you. You got bro. it. You got it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you know what? My last trip to Iraq was just this year. It was in uh, March. I generally go twice a year, March and August. Yeah. March is there. I'm um, there for International Women's Day, which is March the 8th. Yeah. And then uh, August is the remembrance date when ISIS did their horrible deed to the uh, Yazidi people committed a genocide yep. against them so it's wow. celebrated and i shouldn't say word celebrated but a remembrance yeah of, which was august the third so i'm back there on that date as well doing a some type of event uh, at one of the camps that uh, in iraq I, yeah in iraq yeah, yeah. kurdish in iraq yeah and do you always take somebody with you or generally i've been blessed to have this great man right there stan rapata yeah uh he's always um Try to come with me. He's made several trips with me, and I always appreciate his company and and his insight when we're yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. So, what made you, you know, being a two hundred nine native and being from Stockton? Like, how did this happen? Like, how did you, how did you want to, you know, what what drove you inside? Yeah, uh, you know, I'm asked that a lot, and it's a difficult question uh, to answer. Right. You know, because and I'm, I'm a veteran, so I might be able to understand a little bit more than <laughs> other people, but yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, I'll try my best. But then sometimes I don't even understand it. Sometimes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, I believe it's because of the war, and I saw uh, so much atrocities and, and hurt and and, yeah. and that kind of stuff. When you see that that type of thing yeah. happening to the common people, and I always believe that uh, uh, we should try to help the common people, but they get caught up in this the politics and what the politicians say to do and the stuff and that, and they're the ones that suffer the most, you know, yeah. and they're still suffering in. in Kurdistan, Iraq, and my friend Stanley could attest to that. Yeah, uh, these camps they've been living in now is seven and a half years, coming on eight years, yeah. and uh, <clears throat> these are just tents. They're basically tents that have been deteriorating over the years, but they just keep continue covering them with any kind of fabric they could find. Yeah, the, the life cycle of those things are what four or five years. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Stan, can you get a little closer? Uh, bring that oh. mic to you a little bit more, so we can. You know, we, we don't want to miss you on here on the podcast. <laughs> So what was that you said? I said uh, the structures that they have for the Yazidis, their only their lifetime is uh, only four or five years, so they literally are falling apart. Yeah, I thought we all had our phones on silent there, huh? Well, yeah, I'm making sure mine is right, <laughs> right? now. Editing. Yeah, yeah, they are now. Okay, <coughs> but yeah, that's that's pretty amazing, man. That's 
it's 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 something I, I know a few people that you know have the kind of heart that you guys have but just to continue to be able to do that over and over is uh is crazy so you're going to go back in in may i'm hearing yeah um and it's you can see here i got some medical kits um and these are all what they would, what they would refer to us military guys would know as combat medical kits yeah and uh, i have four different brands here four different types when i was there in april i was fortunate enough to meet with some ukrainian soldiers yeah and uh i i thank them for what they're doing and it's unbelievable how they've been holding off on this powerful russian army and um and when I, right before I was going to leave, uh, I asked them, I go, is there anything you guys need that I possibly could do for you guys? And they said, yes, you know what? Our soldiers, when they get injured out in the field, uh, some of them are bleeding out and uh, before we can get them to the rear. So yeah. uh, they said, if you can do anything, help us with acquiring uh, tourniquets to stop the bleeding. Yeah. And I told them I would do my best when I get back. And, uh, and I promise them once I do get some kits, I will come back uh, in person and deliver these to you in person. So yeah. they really felt really great about that, you know. Yeah. So um, this is the kits I have running out right now yes. in front of me. So what's the difference between each kit? Well, no, each kit um, are supposedly they're, and I have no reason to doubt them, but they're all for uh, frontline soldiers. Yeah. And um, uh, they all have tourniquets in it. But some of the kits have, it's a tourniquet, but really it's just a wide um, rubber band. Mm -hmm. It's rubber, you know, and that's not really what they need. They need the cat tourniquet, the cat, right. which is the most ideal tourniquet, excuse me, for a soldier to have out in the field. There's only, I believe, two of these that actually have a cat tourniquet, and this is one of them. And it says, it's a bleeding control kit. Right. Bleeding control kit. It's that clotting. Yeah. And it has a clotting it's a material. What? Oh, for clotting. Yeah, Got it's it. for clotting. Yeah. But it also has the cat tourniquet is in here as well. And the difference is it has a aluminum uh, device that they're able to use to tighten that tourniquet. Yeah. 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 And it also has what they, and everyone talks about this because I've never heard of it, the Israeli bandage. Mm -hmm. Israeli bandage. Right, and that's got that clotting. It has that, but it also has uh, the ability for one soldier to apply it on himself, and he can lock it. There's a, there's some. Uh, oh, really? Uh, um, ankles. There's a metal angle on there where you, when you wrap it around, you just tie it around these these uh, clips. Yeah. And it's secured. So that's what this one has. The red one here. Uh, so that, that seems control. like that's the better one to be able I to think get your I'm, hands I'm on. I'm leaning too. to this one, but yeah. I want to show my other friends I see tonight that are familiar with combat medical kits. Did yeah. you say that was 80? Uh, this one here, uh, it was 80 something dollars. Yeah. But when I talked to them uh, on the phone to customer service, I told them, hey, do you guys have like a bulk price? You know, I can get these at? Mm -hmm. He goes, well, if you buy over 10, We'll drop the price from eighty-seven. I think that's what they were to seventy-five dollars. Yeah. So seventy-five dollars for this one, and this is the one I'm kind of leaning into uh, to get. Um, and they only take two days shipping. Yeah. So Stan and I are leaving on the May fifteenth, which May is 15th. Sunday. Uh, so I have a few days to acquire. If if I go with this one here, I'll, I'll get these in a couple of days and start yeah. packing them up. How many are you planning to take? I'm hoping to take as many as I possibly can. If it's 70, uh, 75, you know, I'll, I'm gonna I, we're going to take them. I've got my team at the uh, University of Pacific right now. They're collecting money from all of the uh, different <coughs> departments for me. So I told them I had to have it by Tuesday. So I'm waiting to see what we come up with, with additional funds yeah. You know what? I'm so appreciative of the, what Stan has done for me and so many others, American Legion and uh, VFW, Veterans of Foreign War. Yeah. They're all stepping up. You know, they're yeah. all stepping up and trying to help me. And I've been so f fortunate to collect. I, I got a pretty good sum of money, you know, in the past 10 days. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I was at a, someone asked me to speak at a church yesterday in Tracy, and I did. Yeah. And the pastor gave me a good sum of money there. Oh, that's good. And uh, he, they invited me back for Sunday services. Yeah. And they're going to write me another check. So yeah. Do you I have a GoFundMe page for? People who no, I don't. You know, I don't have a GoFundMe page. You know, I. <laughs> I'm a bad generation. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's what we're here for. We're here to help and get it on the radio and spread the word and see what a, we can do. I have a group that when I get back, we're going to start working on doing that as well as a web page. Oh, good. 
Yeah. So. Good. There, good. There's a lot of good sites, and there's a lot of guys out there that know how to do that stuff. I'm Definitely. Sure. Our department, that's, especially, that's, that's we're that's being right. taught how to that's do that. We're, yeah. we're learning yeah. just recently as web pages. Yeah. yeah. And I can't thank you guys enough for allowing me to have a platform so I could speak about this. Uh, yeah. It's so, so nice of you guys. Bless you guys. For is there other, so what other happy. ways can people donate? Like how can, how can they get in contact with Bridget Campos? And, well, if they and, can't uh, contact me, they sure can contact Stan. Stan's probably well known Stan, more yeah. <laughs> here in this yeah. county you know, or yeah. this, this area What's for that sure. Information? So, you know, you can shout it out on here. So that way, you know, we can put that on the radio and, you know, and uh, let people know. Okay. Um, uh, my, uh, I have the, I'm the director of the University of Pacific Military and Veterans Student Center. Oh, cool. Yeah, on three campuses. But uh, for those here in Stockton, they can come to 265 West Knowles Way. Uh, it's right across from the campus. It's a regular uh, house. I, my office is 2,800 square feet. Yeah. And uh, they can drop their uh, checks and uh, cash off there. But we will need it by uh, this coming Tuesday. Okay. Yeah, we're going to get this on the radio today, so get that out there. Man, 2,800 square feet, though. We can do a lot of stuff in there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and I do. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Uh, what, what else we uh, want to share, Richard? I know that you were uh, – actually, I was interested, actually, uh, because before you met with the soldiers on the front line, you know, and they told you about the bleeding out and all these things, I was interested in, in how, you know, you have three days, I think you said, in the church, and then what they turned into a bomb shelter – I'm kind of interested in hearing, you know, a little, a little more of that story. Well, you know, I got this um, the story I want to share with you guys. Um, yeah. My first night um, sleeping in the church because I was sleeping with the refugees there in the church, and and um, it was difficult for me to fall asleep, but just because of the travel and stuff like that, it's just difficult to fall asleep. And as I'm laying there, there's probably about forty refugees with their families, um, children, women, children, and so. But I'm sleeping there, and um, in the middle of the night, I can hear children are crying, mm -hmm. crying, crying, you know. Sure. And I can hear the mothers doing their best to comfort them. And it, it immediately came to my thought that uh, this is just not right. You know, a few weeks prior, they were staying in the comfort of their own home and their own bed, safety of their own rooms, you know. And, and now look at this. Look yeah. at this. This is just not right. How can human beings do this to one another? I don't understand that, you know. I don't. Um, I just hope and pray that this war ends like yesterday because it's just so much um, hurting right now over there with the women and children elderly and everybody yeah yeah, yeah. other people's politics and and they have to deal with it <sighs> so true yeah that's so a shame true. yeah it's a shame i know my uh you know my father like i said was in vietnam and yeah and you know with these guys they know what that feels like and and you know what you feel what it feels like you've been there and in such a different time too. Those guys came home and they didn't get no respect and no. stuff like that. And now, yeah. and now we're all paying for it. And then, you know, having to tell them thank you. And it hurts people. And it hurts them too. Cause I know my father, it hurts him. He said, you know, man, it hurts me. Yeah. You know, I, I wish I could have got that, you know, 25, 30, 40 years ago. And then, and now these guys, you know, they need people like you. They need that. Like that's, that's going to, that helps them sleep at night and feel like there's, you know, a small blanket over their heart. You know, you're providing that. Uh, thank you, man. Yeah. yeah, it's a shame how we did treat our Vietnam veterans. Um, yeah, this country did, and uh, it's a shame. And uh, I give a shout out to all my Vietnam brothers and sisters. I'm oh, always yeah. kind of trying to say to them, "Welcome home." Yeah, you know? yeah, always. Yeah, and that's the thing that you you guys are doing for these guys, where you know you're making them feel comfortable. And you know, the veteran is the um, most veterans, and I know I, I know quite a few. I know Stan does too. They, they have some big hearts. You yeah, know? They, um, they'll do what they can to help others. Yeah, and uh, I'm just so proud to be part of that group. And yeah, yeah, I know how you feel. I'm a veteran. Yes, and I do all I can. You got something, Megan? Yeah, you mentioned um, mm -hmm. in the paper that you were were you returning from Iraq when the war began in Ukraine? Yeah, I, I was in Iraq uh, in March of this year. And the war had already started in Ukraine, I think it started the 24th of February. So, of course, in, over there in Iraq, I was watching the news and saw what's going on. And um, I just had this <laughs> strong feeling I wanted to go there, I wanted to be there. So when I got back home, I contacted a good friend of mine. She lives in Italy. And um, I've shown my documentary over there in Italy a few times, a couple of times anyway. Yeah. And uh, she's always been so supportive. So I contacted her and I go, her name is Ola. And I go, Ola, is there any way, do you have any people right now working this war? And she says, Richard, I do. 
Jeez, you want me to reach? She knew what I was asking. I you, <laughs> yeah. you, want, you want me to reach out to them? I could you, could you please, please? And she said, I will. And a couple of days later, they contacted me, this group, and says, uh, we know who you are. Yeah. We know you from the movie and stuff like that. We know you work in Iraq. You're welcome. Come, come. Yeah. And, and, and Richard I, has a reputation internationally. Yeah, tell us about that uh, about that uh, documentary. The documentary is called The Longest Road. And um, I was approached a few years back by some San Francisco biz- businessmen. They wanted to help me. Mm-hmm. And one of the ideas they had was, you should do a documentary. I had no clue. And really, I was not for that because that's not my world. I didn't know how to do it. I don't yeah. know anybody that doesn't that knows how to do that. So, But they, they said, no, this, what better way to tell their story that's what you're trying to do right go, yeah she goes put in a documentary yeah and uh, so Film. i contacted a friend that knew a friend that knew a friend and eventually I got a team together including with stan stan was a photographer he Uh-oh. made he made several trips there uh for the movie and he's in the movie the, the longest road yeah uh, which is on youtube and yeah. if you guys wish to look at it it's about 80 minutes long oh yeah no I'm well well done well done these guys did a superb job uh, putting it together and then uh, we found a, a beautiful uh, singer from uh, she was born in Baghdad her name is Linda George mm-hmm. very internationally well known lady um, she's very popular like uh, Michael Jackson yeah just, yeah exactly. oh, well, over there huh? yeah, that's yeah. their that's their Michael yeah and she uh, she came forward and says I'll sing and, and for the movie during the movie and and she did uh, what a beautiful voice and just yeah. a beautiful lady and um, so appreciative. So many people had their hands in this and they did just a great, great job. So, I'm so proud of them. Richard got a group together from all over the country. Yeah. Uh, the director is from an old uh, uh, family that was in the uh, Hollywood uh, legacies. And uh, his name was uh, uh, Matthew Charles Hall. Uh, and we had uh, another photographer, videographer, he belonged to a rock group called Petra. It's a Christian group. Oh, wow. And let's see. There was, uh, oh, Jennifer. You can't forget Jennifer. She was uh, actually in Washington, D.C., and she uh, was uh, belonged to a, a nonprofit there. Yeah. So we all came from all over the country, and it was a pretty eclectic group. But when we all got together, it was more like you know, we'd known each other for years. Yeah, we all had the same common interest and yeah. desire. Yeah, but if it hadn't been for Richard, I don't believe it would have ever happened. Yeah, I think we made three trips together filming, uh, the filming part. Four. 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 Yeah. yeah, it was pretty intense. Uh, we, you know, we went all over That's the incredible. country, and um, they did some good stuff. They shot some great, great stuff. I can imagine tears already coming down my face watching. Oh, <laughs> you, you, watching yeah. it, man. you will need a uh, definitely some tissue. Yeah. Uh, even for me, it's even difficult for me to watch it. You oh, know? for sure. Um, At the premiere, it was you could hear it all over the, yes. all over the room. There were like thousand, a thousand people there. Yes. Or so. Yes. Yeah. It, so. uh, you, you know, you're showing people that unfortunately are suffering, and uh, yeah. And uh, what should we do? How do we help this? You know, the major question for me is, how do we prevent this in the future? How do we prevent this stuff like in, in Iraq and in Ukraine? And, you know, is, don't we have some big brains out there that knows what to do? Yeah. Don't we? Don't. Is there anybody out there that has some common sense and say? Somebody does. Somebody I, does, yeah. right? I think there's big businesses behind a lot of this stuff, but that's my opinion. You no, know, it's a, no, it's a you're whole right. different uh, yeah, you know, conversation. Yeah, there's, there's a lot always, of people uh, getting a lot of money. Uh, they call that war profiteering. Yeah, um, we, yeah they know that Vietnam is the same thing. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately, and, that's part of it, isn't it? Yeah, with broken souls. Follow. Broken souls, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. hurts. Yeah. Will you be documenting your trip to Ukraine? I will. Stand a man. So are you doing it with uh, film and camera or just cameras? or no, no, you, know, you, video? you have to be extremely uh, vigilant and, and cautious when you go and do these things. I'll, yeah. sh- I'll actually be shooting it with an iPhone. Oh, okay. Wow. So you got to kind of keep it keep it down a little bit so they don't see what's going on a lot of times? Or? Well, it's best not to become a target. Yeah, no, I get you. Oh, I don't know how that part feels over there. <laughs> I've never been over there, you know. I was on a submarine, so I didn't... I wasn't going all over the place doing all that. Uh, you're a bubblehead, huh? Yeah, I mean, you can call me what you want, but I was... <laughs> I was in for uh, 32 years. Oh, wow. And what, what did you do? Uh, all kinds of stuff. From, yeah. Uh, I worked with NASA and the F-18s. Oh, wow. I uh, was a personal secretary to a couple of admirals and generals. Yeah. I got to do a lot of fun things in the yeah. Navy. Well, you know, 
bubbleheads are the smartest guys in the Navy just about. So yeah, you also don't have tans. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Thank God for being a Spaniard. <laughs> oh, I, really? I will say that I went to Hawaii after we did 89, uh, 89 days in underwater, and we pulled, and I think it was about yeah. halfway through the patrol, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to be fine. No worries. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm primarily Spanish. I'm good. I got nice olive skin. I came back, and I was just, I can't even walk. I, just, <laughs> oh, I look like, yeah, I look like a crab. But anyways, back to you guys. Anyway, huh? Thank you. Thank you for your service. Oh, no, thank really you guys. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, is there anything else we want to add? I mean, I'm sure we got a little extra. Or? You know, the only thing I want to add is that, um, you know, I have this um, this tattoo of my arm that I just love. And I had this about four or five, maybe eight years ago now. I can't even remember. Yeah. yeah. But the tattoo says, and, I, and I'll read it for you. It says, every man is guilty of all the good he did not do. Ooh, that's pretty deep. It's wow. deep, huh? Yeah. But I include myself in that, you know, in that quote as well. And, yeah. and we should all continue to try our best to do more, if not overseas, like Stan and I are doing, yeah. you know, locally in your, in your uh, community, yeah. you know, there are schools. There different ways. Of so many different way. ways. Yeah. yeah. And we yeah. should all can. And because we all have that ability to. We do. We do. And so that's yeah. mainly why I hang out with you. Because <laughs> 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 you, you know, you know, with uh, with your brothers in the uh, service, if it's within your abilities to uh, do what it is that they ask of you, yeah, you do. And when he asked me to go, I'm going. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they don't. They don't realize a lot of people that don't because I think what is it? Maybe seven percent of the population has the courage to, you know, go serve and protect. And that's that's a whole different. It's a whole different brotherhood, and you're yeah. you're always going to be there for them when and for your brothers and sisters too, when uh, whenever they call on you. It just right. it's, it's it's in our heart, it's in and our it's, soul. That's what our fabric is. Yeah, but it, you know, there's an opportunity that we always say, "I wish there was something I could do that would make yeah. a difference in this world." Well, this is what Richard and I do. Yeah, that's We're, awesome. We've you know we've been presented with a blessing, and uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In yeah. Addition, oh, go ahead, sorry. ma'am. No, no, go ahead, please. In addition to funds for those kits, are you guys accepting any other supplies for people to donate? Uh, I got a call yesterday from um, what's it, uh, United United Way, and they said they had a boxes full of um, what they call them PPE gowns. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and they said if I would like to have them, so I'm gonna take a look at them Monday. So I'll take and see what they got, you know, PPA. Because I did befriend a, a great, great doctor in Ukraine, and she mm-hmm. took me to her hospital. Yeah. And uh, and uh, and maybe they could use these, you know, uh, PPA and gowns and, and hospital yeah. items, I would call it, you know. That just means more luggage. So uh, I know, there. just more luggage, you know. <laughs> <laughs> more luggage. So all that, so you guys are taking it with you, you're not shipping it, you're going to put it on. No, taking it with us. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I want to see it, and I want to make sure I'm carrying it, and yeah. and, and I'm delivering it personally. Yeah. So, yeah, I want to have it in my possession at all times. That was one of the lessons we learned from going to Iraq, is trying to get stuff through customs. We heard about all the issues that we're having, and we find it much, much easier to actually transport the stuff ourselves, even yeah. though it, it costs a little bit extra for the you know overweight and baggage and stuff, but it's so worth it. And you know, Richard and our goal here is you know we want to be able to save at least one life. Yeah. We can't you know we can't save you know hundreds of them, but we'll, we'll take one life as a win. Yeah. Well yeah. said, Sam. Well yeah. Said. No. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I do too. I agree. Yeah, of course. I, I operate the same way. If I do something that's, you know, yeah. if I could just touch one person, because I've been doing music my whole life, and mm-hmm. I make a lot of, you know, songs that are inspirational, but I always say if I could just touch one person, and see this, the government's always listening to us, right? <laughs> 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 like, I have everything on silent, and it still says, I can't understand that. Oh well, yeah, because <laughs> we're talking about positive stuff. <laughs> Darn phones. After, but yeah, after yeah, this so. interview, I'd like to talk to you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, that's what we do, man. That's what we do. I appreciate you guys coming in. Well, thank you. No, I appreciate you guys uh, giving us this platform. Yeah. This is awesome, you know, yeah. to tell their story, to get the, and remember every guy, <coughs> excuse me, I know I've been in the news lately and interviews all over the place. It's not about me. Yeah. Right? And I know a lot of people go, oh, I seen you. I said, and yeah, I thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. But it's not about me. It's yeah. about the story, about the, what we're trying to do. Yeah. And, and, and the only way I could do that is be interviewed. Yeah, somebody has you know. to go do be the face of it yeah, to do that. Uh, so, you know, yeah, I'm just a messenger. I yeah. know I saw a scene now come back, and I'm reporting, and and um, 
yeah. going to continue marching on. Yeah. But I appreciate everybody's uh, prayers, their uh, good karma, their well wishes. Uh, I love all of you guys are doing that for me. And uh, pray for Ukraine. Pray for Ukraine. Yeah, pray are. that this war just ends. Thank you guys for everything. Thank you. Yeah. And keep the prayers going. Keep the good karma going. We appreciate it. And again, everybody who's going to, here's this on 93.5 KWDC, um, May 15th, you know, where they're going to leave. So we, we have the information and we'll put another uh, PSA together for everybody. So they have the information to get whatever supplies they can because the people need us. Um, you know, just picture your mother or your father or your child or somebody else. In a situation like that, that just kind of got me all kind of teary-eyed. But, but what's yeah. even more important, they're fighting for the exact same thing that we fought for to get our independence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're fighting for their freedom. And I believe the free world should be there for them as well. Yeah. Yeah. I agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you again, guys. Thank this you, guys. Thank you. We'll wrap this up. This is really nice. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>